Welcome into another edition of Game Day Gambles over here on the KC Sports Authority podcast. You can find our show over here on YouTube where you can like and subscribe to the show right now. On our way to 1,000 subscribers and we're still flirting with 900. So if you're watching today and you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, go ahead and do so. Uh, We are here with weekly content for you, not just in the sports betting landscape, uh, but Chiefs, Royals, KU football, KU basketball for all of our local Kansas City area sports teams. And, of course, Greg is here with me to find some winning plays this weekend. It is Saturday morning. College football week four kicks off in just a matter of hours. And we've got a couple of games for you guys today, some plays we like. And let's start with the KU West Virginia game for all the local fans out here. Two teams desperate for a win. Both teams coming in one and two. Both teams having some disappointing losses last week. Um, From the Kansas perspective, um, it is panic mode in Lawrence right now. Coming in, having one of our best teams in program history on paper in theory has not panned out on the field. Uh, Jalen Daniels has gone from Heisman hopeful to washed up in the matter of two weeks. And the fan base is incredibly frustrated. However, all that being said, I feel like today, and I woke up with a good feeling today as a Kansas fan, and hopefully it's not just my bias, but it feels like this is a game for Kansas to get right. Uh, KU opens up as a a one-and-a-half-point underdog to West Virginia on the road in Morgantown. Morgantown, one of the toughest places to play football or basketball. It is just a crazy environment. 11 a.m. kickoff is always odd, too. Um, But I feel like this is a game KU can get back. West Virginia is not a good team. They came in with high expectations like Kansas and have disappointed so far. They've got some nice pieces offensively, but defensively they cannot slow down anybody. Um, They got blown out by uh, Penn State. Last week they gave up a ton of points to to Pitt. Um, So this is a game that I think if if Jalen Daniels is not really broken and this KU offense has a chance to get back to where they need to be, this is the game to do it. So my first play on this is, is... KU plus one and a half or KU money line either way. I think this is a game for Kansas to have any chance of fulfilling their, their season goals. They have to go and win this. And this is a matchup set up for Jalen Daniels to be tremendous. If you look across some of his, his betting lines, clearly Vegas has no um, confidence at all in him. And I think that is where we can come in and, and find some wins. So Jalen struggled throwing the ball downfield. But again, West Virginia's secondary is one of the worst in the Big 12. They give up a ton of yards, and this is a chance for Jalen to to eat. So plus money at 200 passing yards, which sounds crazy because most quarterbacks do that in the first half um, in the way offenses are designed. So I love that right there, plus 108 for 200-plus passing yards. I've got uh, Luke Grimm, alternate receiving yards, 40-plus. JD's alternate passing and rushing yards combined at over 226 and a half. He did that last week with his rushing. And even though his passing game was down, even with the rushing, he hit that. Um, so to me, that seems like a no brainer on the other side, West Virginia's running back CJ Donaldson, very solid running back. I've got him 40 plus rushing yards. He's averaging 82. Um, but a lot of that's one game. KU's defense also has been pretty solid against running backs, not so much against the rushing quarterbacks, but against running backs solid. So parlay all that together, and that is plus 239. And if you want to add KU on the money line, plus 543. So I like this game. I think there's an opportunity for KU fans to get some confidence back in the season and make some money along the way. All right. Well, for those of you who listen every week, we appreciate it. And I'm shocked Keegan likes Kansas. I know you are too, um, but I do too. Hey, there's no way they can burn me three weeks in a row. There's no way. I like him too here in this spot. I think it's an overreaction to the UNLV game. I think it comes down to a few things. If you can limit the big plays for West Virginia, don't let them go over the top, and you can get off the field on third down, then I think Kansas will win. I don't think it'll even be that close. I think they can win this game by two scores, and we can all get our gambling weekend off to a great start at noon. 11 for you yeah get done with that game before all the rest of the fun happens and already be up for the day i like it i think think the next place we got to go here keegan is michigan usc what are your thoughts here yeah this is another one where i'm trying to take data from the michigan texas game now usc is not texas necessarily but usc i think has looked a lot better this year than um defensively specifically you know 11 versus 18 here uh usc a four and a half point un, or i'm sorry four and a half point 
road favorite. Michigan, tough place to play, but we saw how Texas just eviscerated them. Uh, now, Texas has one of the best offenses in the country. They've got weapons everywhere. USC's good. Um, I think they, they look better than people thought coming into the year. Um, to me, this, this is more about Michigan. Michigan still struggles to score the ball. They struggle to put up a lot of offense. Um, I don't have a lot of confidence in them. They're rotating quarterbacks again. Um, junior um, Orgy's coming in today. That sounds a terrible name for him for from football. I, I feel bad from there. But the guy can't throw the ball. He's got seven combined pass attempts in his three years. Uh, I think he played week one when Michigan was rotating all three and did not look very good. Now he is a running threat, but I think USC's defense is a lot better this year at containing the run. So I love USC on the road. Um, money line minus 192. I like it there. And I also like them to cover the four and a half. I know you, though, still have a little bit more confidence in Michigan being at home. So here's the thing. I mean, look, they won the national championship. Uh, so it's going to, they're, they're falling and you can't expect them to win 12 games every year. So Texas is a really good team, right? We know that. They haven't played their cupcakes too well either. I mean, they, they struggled at home last week a little bit. They, they weren't impressive. However, when I look at this line and see four and a half, I say, all right, I kind of agree with what the lads makers are doing here. Michigan is going to play a competitive game. They're going to keep it close. They're going to get some home wins. They're still Michigan. The talent is on the field. It'll come together. So I like Michigan here. Wouldn't be surprised if they win, but I like getting that key number of four and a half. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to roll with Michigan here. Yeah, I think the other interesting storyline with this is, I mean, USC Michigan's a big time name matchup anyway, but this is USC in the Big Ten. Does Michigan want to make a statement and say, hey, welcome to the Big Ten, but hey guys, this this is Ohio State and Michigan territory. You have no business being here. So welcome to the Big Ten, but mm, see you later. Maybe. I just don't see enough on that offense yet to feel confident that they can go win a game 17 to 14 or 20 to 17 USC on the other hand can put up points. You make a good point. They can put up points in the pac 12. Yeah. They're going to get hit today. Yeah. It's going to be physical. If they win, I'll be impressed and maybe they do belong, but won't shock me at all. If when they get punched in the mouth, Michigan actually grinds this game out, gets a win. It'll definitely be a really fun game to watch. Um, uh, just another local flair real quick, Vanderbilt and Missouri. This line has moved in the last 24 hours. Uh, Mizzou was 20 and a half favored at, at minus 1400. Now it's down to 17 and a half and minus 950 on the money line. Missouri to me is one of the four best five best teams in the country, even though they're ranked seventh. And as I'm saying this, the line just moved again. Um, but I really like Missouri at home. They just, again, their defense just shuts everybody down. A little shaky last week against Boston College, um, but I think that Boston College team was pretty solid. So I still like Missouri to cover at home. Not one of my official plays, but just want to throw that out there for, for local ties here. Uh, what's your next game? I know there's so, another big-time matchup today later in the day. There's a few other big ones, but – um, I like Tulane, given one and a half. I won't go too deep into that game, but just look. If you're going to look at that game, look at Tulane's schedule and who they've played. That's why they're a small favorite on the road today, and I think this game, I think they win this game. It's funny. We've had Tulane three weeks in a row on here. I never, never would have thought Tulane would be a team I'd be paying a close attention to from a betting perspective. But, yep, three weeks in a row that they're in a, a favorable spot. They still covered that K-State game two weeks ago, even though they lost it. But they've, they've, looked, they've looked pretty good. Um, any, any other ones in mid-afternoon before we get to our two big evening games? Yeah, look, I think uh, a lot of people who really, really follow the SEC thought Auburn would be good this year. So Arkansas, to me, wasn't that impressive. They had Oklahoma State literally on the ropes. They should have won that game. That proved to me they're going to be the same old Arkansas team, even when they jump out to a 14-point lead. Don't trust them. So I'm going to I'm gonna go with that Auburn having a good season, and for them to do that, they got to win this game today. So give me Auburn today. Cover the two-and-a-half against Arkansas. Yeah, Auburn at home. I mean, it's hard to bet against an SEC team at home. Um, one other one, let's jump down to uh, Utah, Oklahoma State. Um, as of now, this morning – Hours before kickoff, Cam Rising is expected to play. Now, how good does he look? I don't know. The 45-year-old quarterback in his 15th year in college football 
is very talented when he's on the field and he can he can really sling it, but he hasn't been very healthy. Oklahoma State has been shaky this year already. They've had some in- impressive come from behind wins. Um, Ollie Gordon, if he's not involved, then this game is scary. And Alan Bowman, again, another 45 year old quarterback, has to go out there and win it for you. Um, what do you think about this this uh, new Big 12 matchup? Two top 15 teams. Yeah, I think you got like you said the two the two vets here with 50 years experience between the two of them. So. <laughs> I, I said it in the beginning in our first show, I like Utah to win this conference. So to do that, this is probably the game that's circled, right? Because it's coming down to be these two teams. I just think Utah's defense, they are the one, they are one college that they always pack their defense and it shows up on the road just like it shows up at home. Um, I just think Oklahoma State will make I, – I think we all know Oklahoma State is going to make that mistake in the second half that Oklahoma State makes. And it'll happen. They will fumble. They'll throw – Bowman will throw a pick. Something will happen. Utah will turn the game defensively or on special teams, and they'll pull this out. It's going to be close. So don't expect – if you're making a big play on this game, don't think you're going to you know, crack a beer at halftime counting your money. This thing's going to the fourth quarter, probably going down the last five minutes. You're going to sweat it out. But I think Utah's a solid play. It'll be one of my bigger ones. Yeah, this is one I've I've been back and forth on all week. Now with Cam Rising playing, I just think I, I'm personally going to leave it alone. But it's uh, one I'm going to be watching closely. Um, going down the list here, uh, yes. Any any other smaller game plays you have before? Well, I don't know if it's smaller, but we can hit it now. <laughs> I'll give my little speech now. I'm taking Baylor, and I'm taking them. Um, I think I'm going to go sizable in this game as well. And here's why. I'm sick of Colorado. Like, it was it was cute. It was cute when Dion became a coach, Coach Prime, and he's doing Netflix specials. And now he's annoying. I'm just, I've had enough of the guy. He, I don't think he wants to get better. I think he just wants to throw on the headset, and I'm Dion, and we're going to win, and everybody pay attention to me. And here's my son, and he's going to be the number one pick. And I, I've had enough. Um, yeah. Baylor's a better team. Baylor has a defense. Colorado sucks. Eventually, everyone's going to accept that they suck. They're not a good football team. The defense sucks. You can't just bring people in through the portal and hope they adapt to your system without trying to actually coach them. So that's why everybody leaves after one year because yelling and screaming, play my way, doesn't work unless you teach them what that means. So I'll say it again. He's not a good coach. They're not a good program. Baylor is. Baylor will win. I like that. The, the culture in Colorado is terrible. It's all about Shadur checking out his watch and showing off his fifty million dollar watch on the sideline. So, I, yeah, give me give me Baylor all day on that. Go make your chicken commercial, whatever it is. I forget the brand, Popeyes or whoever he's doing that for. Uh, KFC, whatever it is. Go make your commercials. Go coach somewhere else. Nobody nobody yeah. needs you in big time college football. Yep, I'm good with that. But all right, let's go to one of our two big plays tonight. We've got big time SEC matchup, which is still weird to say this is an SEC matchup. You got number six Tennessee on the road at Oklahoma, number 15. Tennessee, the best or second best offense in the country, depending on them and Ole Miss. Uh, they're scoring over 60 points a game. Their quarterback is on Heisman watch for sure. Um, they've been blowing opponents out of the water. Oklahoma on the other side. Good team, but their offense has not looked that solid as yet. Jackson Arnold has been okay, but nothing tremendous. Um, Tennessee, a six and a half point favorite on the road. What you feeling? Um, yeah, Tennessee sold me when I picked against them and NC State. I mean, I don't know who's stopping that offense, but I can assure you it's not going to be Oklahoma. I think Tennessee will cover. I think they will have no problem covering. I think people are going to say, ooh, Oklahoma at home getting points, and they're ranked, and they're going to bet Oklahoma. And just like I was against NC State, they're going to be shocked when their team is down 20. Yeah. I Hammer Tennessee. They've been – I know they're six, but I, I think them, Ole Miss, and Missouri have been the three most impressive teams outside of maybe Texas. Um, and Tennessee, there's just no way they're not scoring 35-plus, and I don't know if Oklahoma can do 35-plus. Uh, so yes, love love that matchup. You know, Sunday night game or Sunday night, Saturday night game on the road for Tennessee is an interesting spot. Oklahoma is a really good environment, but yeah, that that Oklahoma offense just hasn't done enough to impress me. And Tennessee's offense, there's just no way you slow them down enough to really grind out an ugly win. So yeah, I, lo- I love Tennessee on the road there. 
Um, although some other some other guys I've checked out really really love Oklahoma to cover. Um, so my my play, even though it's it's less of a payout, is Tennessee money line or teasing the the line maybe to three and a half. But again, I just like you said, I would not be shocked if this is a, a double digit win on the road for sure. Um, my last play of the day is k-state on the road at byu k-state another top 15 team at the top of the big 12 six and a half point favorite on the road byu is also undefeated k-state's only had one road game and that was at tulane which in my opinion they probably could have lost if tulane didn't make a few mistakes in the second half um i like this game a lot i this is my upset pick of the day byu upsetting at home saturday night up there tough environment um Avery Johnson has not proven he can go win a game with his arm yet. So if this keeps, if this becomes one of those high scoring games, or where the run game is is real muddy, um, can Avery Johnson go out and win you something? I don't know. So I like this. I like both BYU to cover the six and a half, which is plus one hundred, or BYU on the money line upset plus two hundred five. Yeah, I'm with you. This is uh this is the trap game, right? This is you go to BYU at night as a ranked team. A lot of times you leave going, what just happened? So I, I'm with you. I like BYU. I'm going to take them plus the points. I think at worst, this is a close game, goes down on the last possession. But yeah, I would I would not be shocked if BYU wins this game. I like the money line play that you're endorsing there, but I'm going to take BYU and the points. Yeah, the only thing that I wouldn't say worries me, but we, we talked last week about how the Arizona-K-State game should have been way closer than it ended up as a blowout. K-State's a different animal at home. And Arizona couldn't do anything, but BYU, I think, just that environment at night, the the travel, the the late night game, K State's play style, you know, BYU has looked pretty good for a three and team. I think they're way better than the three and next to their name, which sounds crazy because they're undefeated. But I love that. I love that. Um, any other plays for the night? I've got one uh, money line parlay, but I don't have any other game plays. No, um, I would tell you if you're doing a money line parlay, I'd put Tennessee in most of them, which I'm sure you're going to say next. Um, but that would be it for me. Yep, I've got a three leg parlay: uh, Oklahoma State at home against Utah, Tennessee at home against Oklahoma, and then of course BYU at home against K State. Um, all three of those plus seven twenty eight. Not saying I'm super super confident in in the uh, Oklahoma State money line one, but they know how to win at home. So I like that that combo of three there. Um, and then, of course, I did another one that's KU, Tennessee, um, BYU, and – oh, I lost it. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Where did it go? Oh, um, Miami as a big, big-time road favorite. And that was like plus 600 or something. Yeah, um, the, the only other game that like literally was right there for me and – is Iowa, Minnesota. It's two and a half, but a wise man told me if Minnesota's giving more than a half, you might not even want to bet them because they could win one nothing. So yeah. that's the only reason I didn't put it on. I think if you like that game, I would lean Iowa because the defense still is something special, but God, I hate land points with that team. That over under is 35 and a half. It's 35. Just, yep. And I think was it last year, I think Iowa hit the under in like nine of their nine of 11, the first 11 games or something. So, yeah, six six three wouldn't shock me in that yeah. game. Yeah, that's going to be boring to watch. Yeah. But yep, yeah, that's uh, that's all I got. Any other picks for you? Nope, that's it. Awesome. Well, uh, again, appreciate you guys for checking us out. Go have some success betting today. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button below. Give us a follow on Twitter at KCSA Pod. I'll be posting our plays throughout the day. And then make sure you come back later this evening or tomorrow morning and check out our NFL Week 3 slate of games for another edition of our Game Day Gambles. Appreciate you guys, and we'll check in the next episode.